Koci, potem prosím ťa. Čo? Nemali by sme na to sahať, čo sa snaží urobiť? No, čo by to išlo z VGAčka, nie z, z tohto počítača. Nejde? No, keď sa stláča, tak za nič nejde. Ja. Lebo to je hentem počítač. A je to pripojené na VGAčko? Nie. Akože nemáme sa hať na projektory, hej, takže na to môžem. Neprepne to, hej. Hmm. A možno keby sme to zvolili iný počítač. Odbuk. Yeah, ok, so... Yep. <laughs> Such sorcery. That second screen. Yeah. On both. Yeah. Yeah, all good. Cool. Here you have the, the stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to click it? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right. I'm... Thank you. I'm... Vytečně rozptiluje pozornost. Koho to máme na hodinu a na zadní oči? 
Jinak mělo by všechno fungovat tak jako včera, takže... Správný číslo máte taky. Všechny tyto prednášky se nahrávají, že? Úplně přesně, jako do streamu jdou, takže předpokládám, že... Čo ti za streamu se asi nahrávají? Když se mělo nahrávat. Ano, Mike. Kdo je Mike, ne? Kdyby, kdyby bylo nejhůř, tak můžete použít místní počítač, je nastartování. Na ty plačky oni většinou jsou S Apple bývají problémy, protože někdy Apple odmítají pustit na VGAčko. Ani ne, na A to bychom nějak Redukce oni většinou mývají, když tak, když tak my tady máme taky pro případ nouze jednu, ale, ale když to nepošli v dostatečný úrovni, tak stejně nám tam, většinou nám to jde do zelena. Není to chyba... As much as you do. I've got a question for Megamorphs. No, no. Nobody is only for speaking. If you have some slides, you can just give it to me. Just again, just after the presentation.
many of them got into a Broadway company than they got Harvey. So, I mean, does anyone have any topics that like you want to dive into um, that you already have planned or in mind? Like, I mean, obviously there's things like the, the, the creating a new piece of UI. There's things like um, playing with the test.
this is a So you now have to Yeah. 
Oh, so they, they, they force you to perform at that time.
So this is how you um, how you spawn something, right? And it produces the output. Um, if you there's a second <coughs> option here. That you can put stuff like that in. I think. Um, and so you can run Is it top level like this? Is it top level like that? No, I mean you have to aim it. Yeah, I'm doing that. No, it's shell. Okay. But oh, I guess it has all sorts of internal details. And then what do you call? Oh, an instance of it. And it's a list. That's weird. Yeah. So that's kind of an area that we're probably going to fix if people are going to try and interact with this from their plugins. make an easy way to get that. In fact, we were thinking about what are the ways that it's easier Yeah. 
So when you, um, for, for, if you're hacking on this, when you go into the, the guide, you can, well, you can wait for the network to work, but that's, all those options are documented. But you can do any command line tasks through here as well. This is a pack, this is a power feature. So when I'm running here, I can fail to get exactly the same experience if I run. Well, for me, at least that's the case. That's why it's on this computer. I, 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 
I guess sometimes it's not. Physically, physically, whatever you want to advise, it's more like most of the unusual people where we have some kind of physical stimulation. Let's say if you have a stimulation, you have a But yeah, see. No, that's, um, so, like, let for example, I mean, I think this this goes along the same lines. Um, you can see here that if we have multiple machines. The first one is connected via WebSocket on port 9090. Then when we add the other machines, it's just connected to them over SSH. And we launch, the bridge is what's actually processing the user's uh, requests. So most of the stuff is running in the JavaScript. Um, all of the, the inter interesting stuff like, oh, I want to access this API, or I want to read this file, or I want to spawn this message, but that's all JavaScript. And then the bridge basically knows how to process like interesting tasks that the JavaScript gives it. It doesn't know about system configuration or anything like that. So the first time that that's done, the browser, the Cockpit WS launches the bridge directly in its own user session as the user, with the user's privileges and everything. But when we connect other servers, we launch Cockpit Bridge over SSH and talk to it on standard in and standard out. And um, what that does is you end up here. So this is the, this is the uh, demo that we were showing yesterday. We have one machine, uh, and it's called Falcon. And when I add another machine, and type its address, you see that it actually logs into it over SSH. You'll we'll see the fingerprint. <laughs> right? And you say, oh, yeah, no. that's the one I want to connect to, and boom. It used my same authentication in this case to try and log into over SSH. Let's do another one, which has different off. So we have two machines now. You can select between you can configure either one. Um, and this is a laptop. Yeah. Well, because there's the Bastion case, and then, then there's the cloud case. The cloud case where you don't want browser access to all your machines all the time. But every once in a while, you do want to dive into one to figure out what went wrong, what the logger's saying, that kind of stuff. So here, for example, when we're logging to an atomic host cloud instance, uh, it says, well, sorry, it's a different authentication, different user. And we even have an SSH agent loaded inside the cockpit session. That cockpit bridge thing loads an SSH agent. I'm loading a new key into it, just as if I would run SSH add and type the password. It's all, there's, a, there's actually a discoverable UI. Look, there now I can use that key. And atomic uh, cloud instances usually want a different username, right? But then, boom, look, I have a cloud instance added. These are, these are even different operating systems. And there are different capabilities because different UI was available on different servers. And if, you, if I go into those instances, you can see I've logged in on one as Fedora, um, the other one as <coughs> Stack. Um, and so with FreeFPA, it's similar, right? The, we have support for GSS API. There's some bugs that people are finishing working on because when you log in by GSS API, it's not easy to configure the system, at least the defaults. You don't get the wheel group, and you don't get to suit, you don't get the poll kit access, and a bunch of stuff like that. But the idea is that um, the, the mechanisms that people usually use over SSH or that people usually use to connect to these servers are the same ones that work in Kotlin, the same ones that go in the iPhone. Well, so we did a whole bunch of work, and um, Marius did a whole bunch of work making uh, Cocker work on Debian really well. 
Some features are disabled because Debian doesn't yeah. have them on their own. So we're at the point now where we have it ready to go into unstable, but we need a make. So we work with packaging upstream. We actually test. When you open a pull request against cockpit, you get you get like something like this. And see, so you can see Debian's actually there. So we actually have the Debian packaging upstream and a bunch of stuff like that. And we want to package it very similarly so that we can test the experience of the user will actually have. So we need we need a maintainer to, to, to take that on. There are people who said, if no one else shows up, I'll do it. But you know, we're waiting for someone to show up. And essentially work with us because we want to have Debian as one of the like the actually really solidly tested. And if we do that, of course Ubuntu will work well and a bunch of other things. But the idea is, is yeah, not just limited to Fedora or Rush. I, I meant to talk at Boston, um, but I got sick. Peter did it for me. And he did a presentation to try and get the understanding of what's, what's happening. I actually have a real login session in the browser. This is a, it's like on the level of X11 or Wayland or SSH or whatever. That interacts with the system as you would expect, as, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and it just um, allows people to really easily build UI, interact. Uh, interactive stuff, troubleshooting stuff, configuration yeah. stuff. You can, like, like here, this is what I was showing. I mean, I don't know that there's so many use cases for this. The terminal, oh, still installing. We have this as a default option. So. That's because the network is so horrible. Yeah. But one of the examples that we have that we don't ship by default is the ability to load GTK apps, I mean, inside of the browser. It's just part of... <laughs> this is actually in the browser. Like, look, if I change the tabs, like, this is really... These are really browser tabs. And GTK has support for HTML5, but they, they don't have as a session. So there's no auth, there's a bunch of stuff. So this, that's, the, that's the point here. It's a session that allows the browser to basically be part of the system. And it, it, the easiest way is to write JavaScript-based tools, but you can also write terminal-based stuff. Um, this is perfectly X, uh, I mean, sorry, VT100 safe and all of that. Like you can load up a TUI, that's what I'm trying to do with Commander and all of that. The same ha happens with this example. The same happens with VNC. You can you can render a, 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 a VM. Yeah, you can render it here. We have examples for that. Because I have think there is this GTK. What happens if the JavaScript Right. So if you wanted to render a machine's UI, you might do it via VNC and that kind of stuff. I mean, as, as an example, like here, with the journal loading logs, which I have apparently a lot of, we actually spawn journal control and read a template. And that's the thing. All the stuff that's happening in the UI is interacting directly with the system, and it's not like some big mid-tier that has to be written and exists. Um, well, full-time? It's an open source project, so we have contributions from lots of other people too. But I'd say there's five of us, um, and one we have a designer. One of those is a designer because we we work uh, design driven development. Start from the use case, what the user's trying to accomplish, make it work, make it happen, and design it first and then implement it. So that helps. Well, you should, well, you yeah, but surprisingly, a lot of things are not like that. Yeah. Uh -huh.
Yeah, cool. And I hope, I mean, all of this stuff that we're showing, you can run it on your laptop. It's not like it's magic or weird demos or stuff. This is all stuff you can actually do. If <laughs> Yeah, I don't know.